as I've got older, truly, truly nothing surprises me in the so-called Christian faith. I say so-called Christian faith because I truly believe that a great many people in evangelical churches and a great many TV preachers are simply unsaved. That's why, that is the explanation as to why we have such heresy in our churches and such utter blasphemy and heresy on Christian TV. Now, I was listening to a series of faith teachers on video the other day. I think it was Benny Hinn who quoted this verse, Deuteronomy 8.18. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. So, that's it, Benny Hinn said. Uh, God says he's going to give us power to get wealth, and that's what I'm doing. I'm getting wealth. Well, he didn't read the whole of the verse, so let's read the whole of the verse, all of Deuteronomy 8.18. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. Now, the key word in verse 18 is the word covenant, which could be translated as to confirm the covenant. This is an echo of Deuteronomy 7.12, which also mentions the covenant which God made with Israel. This is the Mosaic covenant, the old covenant, not the new covenant of Jeremiah 31, okay? So, this covenant is made with Israel, and we find that at Deuteronomy 5.5, 5, and Moses called all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your hearing today that you may learn them and carefully observe them. And then the Ten Commandments are repeated in Deuteronomy um, chapter 5. So Deuteronomy 5, 1 says Moses is speaking to Israel. So that's the context. God is not speaking to 21st century American Christians in New York, okay, who, uh, who and he, he's, he's not telling them to name it and claim it so they can make themselves wealthy, despite what these vile faith teachers will tell you. So, the context for Deuteronomy 8 is that Israel has come through the wilderness. Having come through the wilderness where God has fed them for 40 years, uh, the manna is going to stop, this bread from heaven, the manna is going to stop. They're going to have to start feeding themselves. So, when they come into the land, what God is basically saying is, if you're faithful to me, if you obey my law, if you, if you keep my statutes and my judgments and you're faithful to me, you're going to be successful in the land, you're going to be productive in the land, you will acquire wealth, you will be wealthy, you will be rich, you'll have all the food you could need, you'll be able to provide for yourself, for your wives and for your children, you will not be needing this bread from heaven, the manna, anymore. Um, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. Well, come on, folks, as he swore to your fathers, what do you think that's a reference to? American Christians in New York in the 21st century? Is that what fathers mean? Yeah? Or do you think fathers refers to the nation of Israel? Which clearly is the context, as I have proven to you from Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 1. One final point. We find ten verses before Deuteronomy 8.18... Um, a reference to seven types of food. Because, you see, this was the worry of the children of Israel. When they move into the land, how are they going to provide for themselves? How are they going to eat? How are they going to live? Are they, are they going to starve in this promised land? Um, I'll read from verse 7. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains, of springs that flow out of valleys and hills. A land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees, of pomegranates, a land of olive oil, and honey. Now what's interesting about these seven food items is that these were the exact same food items which were in the basket of first fruits which um, the children of Israel had to offer once a year. You will find these um, seven items at Deuteronomy 26, chapter 26, verses 1 to 4. But you will also find wool was another item which they had to offer, Deuteronomy 18.4. Now the wool of course comes from a sheep, points to Christ as the Lamb of God. So this was um, a sign of the covenant. The first fruits offering was a sign of the covenant which God made with Israel. And that's the context of Deuteronomy 8.18. Yes, when they get into the land, if they're faithful to God's, 
God's word, if they obey his law, they will get wealth. The purpose of that is you can't feed yourself in the wilderness any, 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 anymore because you're coming out of the wilderness. There'll be no manna from heaven. But you keep God's law, you will acquire wealth, you'll be able to feed your wives and your children and your families. You'll be fine in the promised land. That's the context. The context for this verse is not that some vile American TV preacher like Benny Hinn can claim uh, a new Rolls Royce or a new Ferrari. Or a new house like Benny Hinn's $15 million mansion in Malibu. Truly, folks... Nothing in modern evangelical Christianity surprises me. Nothing at all.